Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another meal prep video, kind of. This is more of like a weekend prep. Um, I don't normally show you like all the stuff that I prep on the weekend because sometimes I'm prepping dinners for the week for my husband or you know like our dinner for Sunday night which is what I'm cooking right now so I thought I might as well show it to you because I'm gonna have it it's gonna be a little bit of higher point dinner because I but I knew it was going to be a higher point dinner so I went ahead and planned for it um this will be 11 points total um besides the broccoli so actually be like 13 points because I'm gonna have some Tuscan broccoli on this side but I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I'm making. I'm making Italian beef sandwiches. Never made this before, new recipe for us. Um, the highest point of this is going to be these rolls, but these are rolls from Walmart. They're huge. I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna have half of one of these with three ounces of the beef, and then I'm gonna do some Tuscan broccoli on the side of mine. Um, so I'll show you how to put this all together. Like I said, this is a new recipe for us, but it sounds really good, but I thought, why not? So also in this video, I'm going to make um, our, our dinner that we'll probably have for tomorrow, which is going to be um, a taco casserole. And then I'm also making some lasagna roll-ups, which will be another dinner for us probably on Wednesday. So this is just, I just want to prep dinners like I did last week and that worked out really, really well. And then my lunches are going to be really easy this week. I'm also going to prep some uh, what is that called? Irish oatmeal. It has the more like the steel cut oats. I think they're called steel cut oats, not Irish oatmeal. Steel cut oats. Um, I'm going to cook some of those because they do take longer to cook, but what I like about them is they keep me fuller than regular like old-fashioned oats, and I'll show you those. They cook on the stovetop. They take about 40 minutes or so to cook. Normally, I would cook them in my crock pot, but I have two crock pot meals, and I only have two crock pots, so um, I'm going to cook them on the stove, but they are really good. Like I said, they're slower digesting, so it, it fills me up. Regular, just old-fashioned oats don't fill me up unless I put a bunch of stuff on them. And I believe the still cut oats are actually lower points. So I just want to get that ready for the whole week. So I have those. So let's go ahead and get these things in the crock pot because we're already sitting at about 1030. And this one's going to take probably about six hours. And then the other one will take about three. So... Let's go ahead and get this going. Um, we have some bell peppers here. We have some au jus gravy mix, some Italian seasoning, and then we have some beef broth, and then we have our chuck roast, which I picked the leanest one. You can see there's not actually a lot of fat. There's just one area right here. So this is trimmed up really, really well. There was some, when I was picking this out, there was some that just had huge fat pockets through there, which you don't get a lot of meat. You're just paying for the fat anyway. So I always look for the lean as chuck roast as possible. And this is about six points for about three ounces, which is quite a bit of meat. And since we have our veggies here, we have some bell peppers. I have two full bell peppers, one red, one orange. You can use whatever bell peppers you want. I like to use the sweeter bell peppers in most of my meals. And then the only other thing you're gonna need are those rolls I showed you. When it's all done, you'll top it with some pepperoncinis and some provolone cheese. But I will show you that part when we get to it. The first thing we need to do is grab your crock pot here. And we are going to take the au jus and we're going to whisk it together with the beef broth. And I'm just doing that right into the crock pot because why dirty? another dish. I did spray this a little bit. This is an older crock pot. This is actually my multi-cooker and it's a little older and so it doesn't seem to be as non-stick as it used to. Put that in there and like I said I just don't want to dirty another dish so I'm going to go ahead and whisk this together then I'll show you what we'll do next. Okay so I did have to trim it up a little bit. I still trimmed off a little bit of the fat. Um, I added in the chuck roast and then added in the bell peppers kind of all around it. And then next up, we're gonna sprinkle all of that with this Italian seasoning mix. Now, because we're used the au jus and the Italian seasoning, we don't need to add any other um, salt for sure. And I don't even think we need to add any other seasoning at all. So I'm just gonna kinda, I guess it says sprinkle it on the beef and the vegetables. I will have this original recipe linked down below. I really didn't change anything on it. It said to use three full bell peppers, but I thought that was kind of excessive because this is actually a lot smaller of a roast. There's just two of us, so um, 
This will have good leftovers for my husband during the week. I won't eat the leftovers on this. I usually only indulge in like roast and stuff like once a week. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and put the lid on this. I'm gonna cook it on high, um, slow cooker high for four hours and I'll check it. But my slow cooker, like I said, this is a really old one. I tend to notice even on high with roasts and stuff, I have to cook them a little bit longer. So I'm anticipating this will take about six hours, but we'll check it at four and see where it's at. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in there, then we'll start on our next crock pot meal. Next thing we're gonna make is another dinner item that we'll probably have for tomorrow for dinner, and that's gonna be a taco shredded potato, what's it called, slow cooker potato taco casserole. So currently I am cooking up this 96% lean ground beef over on the stove. Um, we also need a 26 ounce thing of shredded hash browns. You'll need one cup of some sort of cheese. I'm using the reduced fat um, fiesta blend. You will need a half a cup of fat free half and half or heavy cream. The original recipe does call for heavy cream. That's the only thing I substituted. We need about two tablespoons of taco seasoning. I'm gonna use this taco blend from Kinder's. A can of Rotel tomatoes. I'm using the Walmart version. And then we need some minced garlic, which it says to use a tablespoon of that. So I'm cooking up on my meat and then I'll show you what we're gonna do next. The recipe didn't call for this, but I went and added an additional tablespoon of the taco blend seasoning and put it in with the meat when I was cooking it. I just felt like the meat needed flavor. You guys know I like to flavor all, um, all the layers. So the beet meat, the beef is in here. I did drain it and all of that. I think we're gonna add in the hash browns next, just because I feel like it's gonna be harder to pick it up. I kind of feel like at this point I should go ahead and start to mix it, so that way we're just kind of mixing everything together. So I'm gonna mix the beef and the potatoes. Again, this is a new recipe. I've never tried it before. I'm not sure how many points it would be, but I don't feel like it should be very much because the beef itself is three, the potatoes are two, and the cheese would be three for a quarter cup or a third cup, I can't remember what it is, but um, I think it was a quarter cup. But we're only using a cup throughout this whole thing and this is going to make six servings. So um, I don't think it's gonna be very many points. I'm thinking maybe five or six points. And I top mine, I'll show you, I'll kind of put one together so you can see how I would eat it. I think I have some jalapenos, hopefully I do. I would put jalapenos on top, green onion on top, and then some plain non fat Greek yogurt. But like I said, when this gets all done, I'll do a serving up and show you kind of how I plan on plating it up. Okay, that looks mixed up well. So we're gonna add in the whole can of Rotel. I'm gonna, it doesn't say to drain it or anything, so there's not all very much juice actually in these. I use them mild because my husband doesn't like spicy things. I, if it was me, I would grab the, the regular because the regular is really spicy and I love it. Oops, I almost got a garlic, so I'm going to do a heaping. I'm just going to do the rest. That should be plenty. And then I'm going to add in the taco seasoning. So this is that Kinder's taco blend, which is really good. The half a cup of fat-free half and half. I'm going to mix that before I add the cheese. And I kind of contemplated not putting all the cheese because I thought well maybe we'd want some cheese on top but I think it's going to be nice and cheesy so I may sprinkle some on my husband's just to give him some extra cheese but you guys know I'm not like a huge like cheese person so um and this would also actually be really good to put some of this like maybe do a half of a serving of this and add some to cottage cheese and I do have some cottage cheese I don't know if I'll have any left after the recipe I'm making next but that would be really good as well. Oh, that's mixing up really well. Okay, now we have our one cup of cheese, which I weigh out my cheese rather than use a measuring cup. I just use my scale and I weighed out one cup worth. And I'm just gonna stir that up really well. And we're gonna cook this on high for three hours. And I mean, really everything's cooked. So I think it's just a matter of, well, getting the potatoes and just kind of getting all the flavors melded together. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this on high for three hours. And then I will show you what it looks like. And like I said, I'll do a plate one up so you can see what it looks like. A little side note before I move on to my next one, I was looking for the onions 
in my freezer and I realized I don't have any Tuscan broccoli. I thought I had two packages. I went and looked in my other freezer. Nope. That's why I didn't pick any up this weekend. So on the side of these, because I planned on having the broccoli on the side of these also, and along with the Italian beef sandwiches we're having tonight, I guess I'll have green beans because I do have two cans of green beans. So I'll have green beans on the side of this and green beans on the side of my Italian beef sandwiches tonight. And I will probably have like a mixed salad as well. So let me go ahead and show you what these are. These take a little bit longer too. So it's nice I'm starting this early, get these in the oven and I can work on some other things around the house. So we're gonna make some lasagna roll-ups. I love to prep these ahead of time because they stay good for like four days in your fridge. And they're almost better the next day after you reheat them because they just are so solidified. Cause you know when you take lasagna first out of the oven or even lasagna roll ups, they're kind of slippery. So by, you know, having them prepped, you just heat them up and they are so good. Let me show you the ingredients. We need some lasagna noodles. Now I'm halving this recipe. So the recipe I am basing this off of was 12 servings. I'm just doing six. And so I'm gonna do six noodles, but just an FYI, whenever you're doing lasagna roll-ups, this is not as important if you're just doing regular lasagna, but for lasagna roll-ups, I highly recommend you do like two extra noodles because they do tend to rip and break and sometimes you can't roll them up. Like I said, with regular lasagna, not a big deal because you can just layering it. So I highly recommend doing two. So I'm gonna do eight of these. You need some chopped spinach. Now this recipe calls for you putting the chopped spinach in with the cheese mixture. I prefer to put it in the meat mixture myself, but do it however you wanna do it. And you'll need, I don't know, probably about a half of a cup of the spinach. And this is frozen spinach, so I'll just kind of break some off. I'm gonna use 96% lean ground beef. Now, if my husband wasn't going to have this, I would probably make it with ground chicken or ground turkey, just so it's less points, but he can't have that. So we're doing ground beef. Some chopped onions. You guys know I love my freezer onions. Then for the cheese mixture, we're gonna use some good culture 2% cottage cheese. If I had some fat free, I probably would have used it in this recipe because when I don't mind using fat-free cheese, cottage cheese in recipes. I just don't prefer to eat it that way on its own. But I knew I had this in there. I knew I needed to use it up. So we're just gonna take a hit with the points. But you know, this does not have, it's not that much difference. This is two points for a serving, so not too worried. And then we are going to need one and a half cups total of mozzarella cheese. We're gonna put half of it in the cheese mixture. The other half goes on top. Parmesan cheese, we're gonna only need about a quarter cup of this and this is gonna go in the cheese mixture. We need some Italian herbs. Oh, and we need our marinara sauce. Let me go grab that. We are gonna use the no sugar added Kroger marinara sauce. I count this as zero points. Some no sugar added marinaras will have oil in it. This one does not, as you can see. So to me, this is zero points. Um, you can count as points if you like. If you scan it, it will tell you points, which sometimes scanning, especially even scanning zero point foods, it will come up wrong, but everything in this is zero points. So like I said, you have to watch it. I think the Prego one, um, no sugar one has oil in it, but this one does not. And this one is a lot cheaper than the Prego one. I have picked up the Prego when it's been on sale. Um, when, but when I go to Kroger, I do try to get this one. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and get the noodles in the pot and get these cooking. I'm gonna go ahead and cook up. I'm only gonna do half of this and I'm gonna toss the other half in the freezer because we don't need this whole thing for only six roll-ups. So I'm gonna do half of this, add some spinach and we'll do some salt and pepper. I'm gonna go ahead and cook that up with some of the onion. So we have our beef, spinach and onions in here getting ready to cook. And then in the meantime, let's go ahead and go make the um, cheese mixture or water coming to a boil for the noodles. So I need six ounces of this cottage cheese. Like I said, I half the recipe, so it's just kind of approximate from the recipe. Um, I'm going to add in just three quarters of a cup of the shredded mozzarella. This is that reduced fat. And then a quarter cup of the shredded Parmesan. add in some Italian herbs, some onion powder, and some garlic powder. 
using this cottage cheese, we're gonna have, this is gonna be a pretty high protein um, dish, I believe. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the points for six servings. So it would be one roll up, but if it's not very many points, then I may just, if I have this for dinner, I may do two roll ups with a salad or something on the side. So we'll just see how many points it comes to with one roll up. They're pretty good, good size roll ups. And in the past when I've made this, I've only had one roll up and then like a big salad and some veggies. So that's probably what I'll do. So the points you see when it's all done will be for just one roll up, it'll be six servings. But like I said, there's a way you could cut these points. You could use fat-free mozzarella. You could use fat-free cottage cheese. That would cut the points so, so much. Um, but I am not afraid of a little bit extra fat because you guys know I'm also trying to up my calories a little bit. So this will be just fine for me. So here this all make sure it smells so good. I don't think the original recipe called for garlic powder and onion powder, but to me, Italian herbs was just not enough seasoning. I find that a lot with recipes. I feel like I have to add seasoning to them. So we're gonna go ahead and put this aside while the rest of our stuff is cooking up. One of the best tips that that website gave was to use like a sheet pan with a silicone pad to roll do your roll ups because these get really messy and I mean, they make a huge mess. So I just had a few of them do this little crack thing, which is not bad. Um, I feel like I remember these noodles smaller than they used to be. I feel like lasagna noodles used to be a lot wider. I don't know, maybe it's just me. Um, it says to take about two tablespoons of the mixture and put it on there. But I think because I am tracking everything in just one recipe, I'm just gonna try to do it as even as possible to use up this whole thing so um so let's go ahead and do all of the cheese and then we will do the meat mixture next i have my oven preheated to 375 so i i wanted to leave a little bit extra edge here because i'll roll them up and then that way you don't have it oozing out um so now we're gonna put some meat sauce and again i'm gonna try to do it i think it's at about two tablespoons um so I'm just gonna kinda put that on top. Now, I, for reason why I like to put the spinach in with the meat mixture is because I'm not a huge, huge fan of spinach. I like to throw it in smoothies, but I know it's good for you. You get a lot of calcium and vitamins and stuff from it, and it's a nice kind of filler. So you can't taste it as much in the meat mixture as you can in the cheese mixture. So it's just a personal preference. Um, it's still getting in there. It's adding, you know, just those extra layer of vegetables. So again, up to you how you want to do it. Or you can leave it out completely if you're just not a spinach fan, but I like it enough cooked really well um, in with my, with my meat. Okay, so we have that. And now we're gonna roll up and you want to roll up from the side that you really stuffed it. And yes, it's still gonna make a mess, but what's nice is all this mess is going to be on this sheet pan and not on your counter. Such a great, great tip, honestly. So I have a pan over here, let me show you. Just have a casserole dish that I put. It says to put the meat mixture, but I like to just put the plain marinara on the bottom. So I did about a quarter cup and just kind of spread it out. Um, but again, you can use your meat sauce if you'd like. I just prefer just to do the plain marinara. But yeah, this is going to be so much easier to clean up. So I'm going to go ahead and finish rolling these up. And then I'll show you what we'll do next. You can see here, we don't have much of a mess, but it's nice. It's all in here. Okay, so we have our roll-ups here. We're just going to take the rest of this sauce. And we're just going to pour it all on top. Try to make sure you get all your, your little rolls covered up. And then what we're going to do, and I'm going to show you another little trick that I think was also on this website, but I already have done it before but I'll show you. 
So we're gonna take our cheese, so the other three quarters of a cup of cheese. And again, these are my measurements because I halved the recipe. You will wanna look at, if you wanna do the full recipe, or you can do whatever you want. I'll give you the full recipe and the link down below, and then you just adjust it how you need to. And this website had a way where you can just change the servings and it automatically adjusted the recipe for you. Okay, let me go grab some toothpicks and I'll show you my little hack. Now we're gonna cover this with foil, but so we don't get the cheese to stick to the foil, which you can also just spray your foil with cooking spray. But I've even done that and sometimes still had it stick. So this is a hack I learned a long time ago, probably from a recipe somewhere, or it could have been on Instagram or YouTube or something, I don't know. But you just poke them in there. And you probably don't need to put one in each roll. I think just the top one should be fine. And then you just cover your foil and it does not touch your rolls at all. So there we go. Um, this is gonna go into a 375 degree oven for about 45 minutes to an hour, just depending on your oven. I'll probably, mine will probably be 45 minutes. My oven tends to cook a little bit hotter. So everything now is going. I have a couple hours left on my, of two hours and 20 minutes left on my taco casserole. We have three hours and five minutes left on our Italian beef. This will take an hour. So in all that time, I'm gonna do some house cleaning and then we will come back and I'll show you what everything looks like. Oh, we have to do our oatmeal too, which I'll probably wait to do that here in a little bit. Um, probably time it to get done around the time that the lasagna is getting done. I changed my mind. We're gonna go ahead and just do the oats now, which y'all look, Irish oats, I was right. Um, ready in 30 minutes. I tend to think it takes a little bit longer than that. Um, I have these ones and I also have some Thrive Market ones, but these ones I need to use up before I tackle the other ones. So range top, we're gonna do four servings because I will have it for breakfast at least two days, but probably, I probably will, may have it two or three days, but I just wanna have four servings. So we need to do four cups of water and we need to do one cup of oats and that's it. And then we'll do a little bit of salt. Um, I do like to put, put salt, this is optional, but I do like to put salt in my oats. And you can see here all the, um, all the macros for it. So um, it does have quite a bit of fiber. We're looking at four grams of fiber, no added sugar. It does have four grams of protein, but I'm gonna be adding some of PB2 to this when I eat it. And um, so that'll add a little bit of protein as well. And then I'll probably pair this with like a yogurt or something so I can make sure I get enough protein in. Um, but anyway, only two and a half grams of fat and 27 grams of carbs, but you are looking at four grams of fiber as well. So first thing we need to do is just bring the water and salt to boil. Then we stir in the oats. You simmer it uncovered on low heat um, for about 30 minutes. And you do want to stir it or else it will get kind of sticky and stuff. But I do tend to find these a little bit creamier than regular oats. Like I said, it keeps me a lot fuller. If you are not familiar with steel cut oats, here is what they look like. So they're just a rougher cut of regular, of like the actual oat with rolled oats. They're a little bit thicker instant oats. They're really thin. So, cause they cook quick, they cook really quick. But um, these ones in the old fashioned oats are my favorite quick cooking oats. Don't keep me full at all, but these ones, and I actually was thinking about it. I have some plain protein powder. So I may even, when I have this to eat, add some almond milk in it and then add a little bit of protein powder in there. It's unflavored protein powder, and that just adds some extra protein. So anyway, here is, that's, this is what they look like. And you can look them up. You can look up still coat oats and find out uh, more about them. Okay, so these are all simmering. So when we come back, I will show you everything finished and plated up. Okay, so mine took 45 minutes. I'm gonna let them cool completely before I put them in the dish that I will store them in in the refrigerator. Um, I'm gonna have the points on the screen for one of the rolls and two of them because you know how Weight Watchers can be. Um, sometimes the math doesn't quite add up because of all the ingredients. So I'll pop up for one, then I'll pop up for two. And these smell as good as they look, y'all. So good, so, so good. 
Alrighty, so this is all done. So I will go ahead and put together a serving and show you how I will have this when I eat it for dinner or for lunch. And here is the finished potato taco casserole. So this actually makes eight servings, not six. So I just weighed out the whole thing, divided it by eight, and I got my serving and it's a really good size serving. I will have to re-plug it into my tracker because when I first put it in my tracker, I did six servings, which was six points. But I'm gonna pop up here on the screen the correct calories, protein, and the points for an eight serving. But you guys, look at this. This will make great for lunches and for dinners this week. It's kind of a boring photo, but this is my oatmeal. The one full cup of cooked steel cut oats is gonna be three points. And you will see in my daily what I eat in a day videos, and you can see how I'm going to dress this up to have for breakfast. All right, so I toasted the buns and then I weighed out six ounces of meat on each one because I plan on only eating half of one of these and then I have two slices of cheese, but again, I will only eat half, so I put some pepperoncinis on top. I'm gonna throw this back in the oven and let it toast up a little bit, and then I'll show you my plate. And here is my finished plate. My husband has, of course, a full one, but I already tasted the meat, tastes really good. I will have everything here on the screen. It is 11 points. So it's higher point, but I think it's gonna be pr pretty filling. And then with the green beans, um, it's just because of buns. You could actually buy lower point buns um, or just have this without a bun. 